this party started. So thank you everyone for joining us on this Zoom today. Um, we have um, our Something to Chew On, which is focused on strategic planning um, with our own homegrown, Sandia. And next time we've got Colorado Nonprofit Association's Amber Cote is going to join us on a robust discussion on roles and responsibilities of nonprofit board development. Um, Shelly's going to examine the statewide nonprofit climate, the legal and fiduciary responsibilities of board members and the critical role and function of a board. So I think we can all use that, um, we can always use a refresher on those um, best practices around board development. There will be a door prize. Um, one participating organization will win a free three hour board training with Amber um, for your ED and board chair. Um, so let's keep that in mind, make sure it's on your calendar and that you're ready for that. But let's look at what we're gonna do today. Um, today, we're going to um, look at the uncertainty of COVID with other external factors. Um, we may be tempted to throw out the strategic plan. I tried, my board said no. Um, so how are your organizations planning with so much up in the air? Nonprofit consultant Sandia will present a participatory training um, to explore how to move past the paralyzing inaction or outdated strategies to pivot quickly and remain true to our mission as core and core values as organizations. So um, most of you know, but just to remind you, Sandia is a nonprofit consultant and change facilitator, facilitating powerful, powerful virtual and in-person meetings and retreats. A local leader in the nonprofit sector, she previously served as the executive director of the Garden Project of Southwest Colorado. She founded her practice Sagebrush Limited in 2018 and has been facilitating highly interactive virtual meetings and strategic planning sessions for diverse clients across Southwest Colorado. She loves a new challenge and learning new skills and COVID has proven fertile ground to dive headfirst into exploring new ways to support organizations. Please welcome me in welcoming Sandia. Thanks so much, Brigham. Thanks, Tracy, for all the support. And it's great to see so many of you. Yay. Um, I'm going to turn off the share screen in just a little bit. Um, so hopefully that helps clear up some of your uh, digital window space. Oh, there's Katie. She just popped on. Um, Welcome everyone. Um, I've had a lot of fun uh, putting together this uh, little workshop for us. Um, and this is not your typical webinar. This is, will be very interactive. Um, and I'm really looking at my role here as a facilitant. I heard that uh, word last week and I thought that was so cool. It's like a facilitator participant. So I am here to learn alongside all of you. I truly believe in the collective wisdom of the group. And I know all of you have so much wisdom to share from your own experiences, your lived experiences, um, everything you've experienced this year, uh, this chaotic year of 2020. So I'm here to learn right alongside of you. I'm not um, going to be giving a lecture. I'm here to pose a few questions to set us up with some activities um, to guide us through this question, essentially, of how can we strategically plan during these uncertain and chaotic times? I know this is a question that all of the, the executive directors and board presidents that I've worked with this year around strategic planning, that's their number one question. Like, how can we even plan with so much unknown in the world? Like, does this even make sense? Um, and I will posit just the rhetorical question, do we ever really know the future? Do we ever really have any certainty about what might happen tomorrow? I would say, no, we actually don't. We may have a lot of assumptions, a lot of guesses, a lot of things based on habits and norms that we can have a pretty good guess, perhaps what might happen tomorrow, but we really don't know. And I know this has been a wild year and a difficult year for so many of us, and I want to acknowledge that. And I imagine you all have some silver linings in your back pockets from this wild and crazy year of 2020 that you could share in your breakouts. What are those opportunities that have arisen during this time of tumultuous change? Um, and that's really what we're going to be talking about today. 
So with that, I would like us to go through just our group agreements or norms. Um, everyone can see these slides, right? Good? Thumbs up? Okay. Could I get a volunteer to read our group norms for us today? Any takers? Feel free just to wave your hand on your screen. All right, Banji, thanks. Oh, I'm not muted. Okay. Not. <laughs> I was trying to unmute and I wasn't. Okay. Um, openness and courage to explore without judgment and with vulnerability. Embrace the don't know mind. Loving kindness, showing care and concern for the well being of ourselves and each other. Patience, the pursuit of a patience with ourselves, with others, and with the process. Co-creation of this learning space together, we will bring different perspectives and we will be learning alongside each other. Move up, move back so all voices can share. Human-centered virtual space, recognition of holistic human needs through breaks, food, hydration, movement, music, embracing multiple learning styles and taking care of ourselves. Thank you so much, Banji. I really appreciate that. The, the food and the hydration is gonna be up to you, but I will provide some music and some movement breaks. The bathroom's gonna be right down the hall. So whenever you need that, you can just go right down the hall. We will be taking an eight minute break um, partway through as well. Um, so take care of your, yourself in this space. I've also pasted the link to our shared Google Slides um, in the Zoom chat. So if you wanna open up these Google Slides, um, you have editing access to those. You can make yourself a copy to use later. Um, and we will be working in this shared workspace together. I know a lot of you are in the last Zoom Zombies uh, training, which is great. Um, so we are, are not gonna be spending as much time front loading um, today, but hopefully folks are able to open the Google Slides and have that up on part of their screen and the Zoom on the other part of their screen. So um, please, uh, Start doing that if you can, and I'll stop the screen share in a little bit once we get through this beginning stuff. But first, I would like um, to get us in a very short mindfulness moment because this is a wild and crazy year, and I think all of us can benefit from a little bit of self care. I know it helps ground me uh, into any workshops or sessions that I do. So, as you feel comfortable, uh, feel free to roll your shoulders back and just find your feet on the floor sink into the sensation of your physical body. You spend a lot of time staring at the screen and forgetting that sometimes we have a body here behind our eyes. You're welcome to close your eyes and just take a couple of deep breaths for yourself. Inhaling slowly and exhaling slowly. Twice more, inhaling to a count of four and exhaling to a count of four. Filling up your belly with fresh air, filling up your lungs and letting it all go. Just shake your arms out a little bit. And when you're ready, you can bring your awareness back into our shared space together. Thank you. And I do wanna do our quick um, Native Lands and Indigenous Peoples Acknowledgement. In Southwest Colorado, we are occupying the traditional land of many Indigenous people, including the Ute Mountain Ute Tribe and Southern Ute Indian Tribes of today. And this past Friday, November 27th, was Native American Heritage Day. It's a civic holiday that's observed um, the day after Thanksgiving every year in the United States. Um, and this uh, bill that was signed uh, back in 2008 encourages Americans of all backgrounds to observe the last Friday in November as Native American Heritage, Heritage Day through appropriate ceremonies and activities. And that wraps up Native American Heritage Month for the month of November. And now we are here December 1st. 
So I think it's valuable and important to recognize the diverse cultures and peoples that we have right here in our own communities and across the nation. Zoom controls, give me a thumbs up if you consider yourself pretty much a Zoom expert at this point. You're on Zoom meetings a lot, a lot. How about a sideways thumb if you're like, well, still learning a few tricks and tools and then thumbs down if this is maybe one of your first uh, Zoom meetings or feel free to unmute. Okay, we got a lot of sideways and a lot of thumbs up um, and we encourage you to rename yourself under the three little dots with your pronouns um, if you can um, and we do encourage you to start your video if you're able to get onto video depending on your internet connection. We have lots of helpful virtual meeting guidelines. I know we went over these in the last workshop. Not all of you are here for them, but I encourage you to review these. Um, and this is how we will be working together uh, virtually. So just skimming through very, very quickly here. And now I would like to start us off with a couple of quotes that resonate with me um, about strategic planning during uncertain times. And then I'll stop the screen share so we can uh, just kind of see everybody. But these are some uh, quotes that I found that resonated with 2020. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. This too shall pass. All great changes are preceded by chaos. What do we mean by chaos? We'll be exploring that a little bit today. And a good plan implemented today is better than a perfect plan implemented tomorrow. I'm going to stop our screen share here and introduce a very special guest uh, who many of you know, Ann Morse, who's the executive director of Mana Soup Kitchen, who I had the pleasure of working with uh, this year with strategic planning. Um, and I know Ann may only be able to join us for a, a little bit of this workshop today, but I wanted um, to invite her here to talk about her and her staff and board's experience with strategic planning during this very uncertain year, uh, during a lot of chaos. So Anne, if you want to um, kind of respond to any of those quotes on, page, on slide eight, um, like all great changes are preceded by chaos, what has that meant uh, for MANA? What was your experience with strategic planning? Um, thankfully, our strategic plan ended 2019 because it really gave us the motivation um, that even through the pandemic to do a new strategic plan. So that kind of was the ultimate first push. Um, you know, I think we all had a lot of different feelings that sometimes it was very overwhelming. Um, but really, through doing this process um, and with your great facilitation, we were able to come up with a great plan that actually gives us goals, a direction. And so actually, I now feel more focused um, and actually have items and that we need to tackle and that it kind of energized the staff and board um, to really work together. And it also went through and we were able to, you know, go through this process where we all had a voice in the process. And so when we came and we finally have our strategic plan, everybody really felt good about it and everybody felt like they had a voice and so it's really brought us a lot closer together and um, we now feel energized for the future. I was, I was muted. I love it when the little pop-up comes up and like, you're muted. Um, but thanks, Anne. Thanks so much for sharing your experience with MANA. And this has been the year of the most number of meals that MANA has ever served in our community. Isn't that right? And there's been, tremendous need. I think many of us are seeing this through our organizations that your mission may be more important than ever during this time. And I think MANA has definitely seen that. And Anne, can you speak a just a little bit to how your staff was not like um, paralyzed by fear or inaction during such a pivotal moment but how they were immediately able to step into action with some coordination, some planning, even before we finished all of the strategic planning um, in order to really deliver what the community needed at that time. 
I think um, just, you know, being a nonprofit and like everybody here, you know, we have services and missions that we really, um, you know, strive to make sure that we get these services to the community. And so since like March 18th, when all the restrictions started happening, um, the staff and the board just got together immediately to decide, you know, what does that look like? But really through the strategic plan, we were able to figure out what does that look like in the long term? Um, and so things that we had started to do, um, we had learned a lot of lessons and realized what was efficient and what's, what wasn't. And so by really taking on those lessons learned and then, um, you know, all the different discussions that we had through this strategic process, um, you know, what are the barriers, what works, um, really helped us, you know, figure out what it's going to look like in the future for us, matter what COVID looks like or whatever might happen. Um, it's really given us that vision and that direction we needed. Thanks, Ann. Thanks so much for sharing. Let's give Ann some love. Um, if you can give her a thumbs up or a clap or a reaction, let's give her some love. We appreciate you, Anne, and you're welcome to stay on as long as you can. And if you need to go off to write your next grant, we understand that too. Um, so thank you for sharing your experience. Okay, so we have um, lots of virtual meeting support uh, Google Slides for you on uh, slides nine through um, 17, essentially. Um, so please make a copy of this presentation for your own uses, but then come back to our shared um, presentation for our shared workspace. Um, you're welcome to use these in any uh, board meetings, board retreats, staff meetings uh, to help support your work. Um, I'm not gonna be going into all of them, but I would like you to find a way that you can see both the Google Slides and the Zoom up on your screen at once. And we will be going um, down to slide 18. So just skipping right over that stuff. If you need those resources, they're there for you. But on slide 18, I love this one. It's the 20-20-20 rule. So for every 20 minutes that we're staring at a screen, we try to stare at something 20 feet away for just 20 seconds. So give your eyes a rest. Look at something out your window. Look at something in nature. Look at something beautiful in your room. And just give your eyes a little rest. So hard for me to wait 20 seconds. Patience, patience. <laughs> Susan, I think I saw you out on the river trail yesterday. I rode by up by Oxbow. It was good to see you out there. Okay, so now the real fun begins. We are on uh, slide 19. And this is where you get to start interacting with our Google Slides. A lot of you have experience with this from last time. So we are on slide 20 now. Please go ahead and sign in to our uh, virtual workspace here. Share your name, your pronouns, your organization, or if you're not with an organization, your current passion. And if you can think of a simile of what strategic planning in 2020 is or was like for you. So similes are similar to metaphors, although they use like or as. So strategic planning in 2020 was like what? What was it like? Give us some uh, strong adjectives, some descriptive imagery. I need to think of one for myself too. Pulling a rabbit out of a hat, doggy paddling, trying to keep your head above water, fear of the unknown. Ooh, like a parkour ninja. Nice, Katie. That's fun. So if there's not room on slide 20, feel free to go down to slide 21 or 22. Nikki shares strategic planning in 2020 was like a river, fast and fluid. Like building an airplane while flying it. Yeah. Like fishing with a spear. That sounds very challenging. 
you think you're heading towards one thing and then you have to like account for like the, the water angle, right? Like how the light changes. Interesting and new. Um, like a roller, roller coaster maybe. What else? What was strategic planning like? Was it same old, same old for anyone? You're welcome to unmute, share, same old, same old. A crapshoot? What year is it? <laughs> yeah. Sandia, I have an organization that we haven't gone through this yet. So it's in the next couple of weeks and I'm in charge of it. So this is really timely. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And people are welcome to share like, um, like me, well, or even just how 2020 was as a simile, if you want to share on that note. Improvising, dance improv improvising, as smooth as a star fruit. <laughs> hey, Jessica, I love that one. And then you deleted it, put it back in there, that was great. As smooth as a star fruit, what does that mean, Christine? Can you unmute really quick and tell us? It was not smooth at all. And <laughs> we started in December. And so then we had to like change everything and yeah, it was not smooth, but we did it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but you did it. Good job. Maybe Tracy and Brigham, if you can help anyone that's having issues with Google Slides, that would be that would be awesome if you're able to help them. Um, looks like maybe Catherine needs a little bit of help. Oh, maybe she just walked away. Okay, well, thanks everyone for sharing. Uh, it's fun to just get some uh some images here oh a dartboard susan jones shared okay so this gives some very colorful images of what strategic planning is or was or maybe could have been like for people in 2020. Uh, lots of great images here we have a resource garden on slide 24 so if you have any resources that you would like to share with the group um, during our time together feel free just to add a link add some resource um, I would love to see uh, what you all are using for strategic planning. Um, so feel free to type things in here on, on slide 24 throughout our time together. And then we will be um, going down to slide 25. And this image of the, um, the yin yang here, we have strategic planning on one side of the yin yang, and then we have uncertain and chaotic times on the other part of the yin yang. And I want us to think about how do we reconcile these juxtapositions? And first, if you could type into the chat, in terms of strategic planning, what does strategic planning mean to you? What words and associations come to mind? I'm not looking for the Oxford Dictionary definition of strategic planning, but just type in a couple of random words. What comes to mind when you think about strategic planning? Got roadmap from Brigan, big picture, future target, GPS. What are some of those images, those words, or even feelings that come to mind with considering strategic planning? Mission values, goals, matching mission with opportunities, the basic outline, a moving target direction, direction, shared vision, something we need for grant applications, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, feel free to read what everyone is sharing. Identifying key priorities, way of communicating, how plan evolves, a journey, working together. Yeah, this is all strategic planning. Thanks for creating our shared definition here today. This is lovely. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yep, sustenance for the journey. Having the time to sit down and think. Yeah, actually setting aside that time for planning versus always doing, 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 which we're all doing so much, right? 
journey, not a destination. Mm, yeah, that speaks to like the iterative process of strategic planning, that it's not necessarily a document that you're just going to go and put on the shelf, um, but it should inform our actions of our board, our staff, all the time. We can revisit, revisit it in staff meetings and board meetings quarterly. It's constantly staying relevant to the times, and that is, in essence, strategic, right? Um, if it just sits on the, the shelf, that's not strategic at all. That's an outdated document very quickly. Reflection, mm -hmm. great. And now if you could type into the chat, what threats and opportunities lie within uncertain and chaotic times? What are some of the threats and opportunities that we have experienced within our own organizations? this year during such an uncertain and chaotic time. Funding. Mm -hmm. yeah. Need for innovation, new programs, competition for resources, new ways to serve the community, a need to move online. Yeah, new collaborations. Who would like to share with us um, a new innovation or a silver lining from their organization or their experience this year? I'd love to hear from two or three of you. Anyone want to unmute and share? So where have you taken a leap of faith? Anne Marie? Yeah, I can share. Um, so I'm with Adaptive Sports, and um, we had to cancel. Um, all of our in-person programming for this summer, um, which is typically about 450 um, program delivery days. And uh, we sat back and, and had the opportunity to talk with families and started a rental program. So we actually were delivering um, bikes and boats to families, providing training to parents and caregivers on how to support their individuals um, and actually getting families out riding together um, and just saw a ton of success with it. And we're actually going to get to keep that um, as part of our programs going forward. Wow, amazing, amazing. And something that probably would not have happened without this year, right? It's a whole new program. Yeah, let's give some love. That's awesome. What else? What's another innovation or silver lining that you have seen in your organization this year? Yes. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't see your name on here. In the pink. Sarah. Oh, it's me. Hi. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, you know, we were running a pretty lean organization because we were in a turnaround plan last year anyway. And so we were able to really pull together and pivot in new ways. Um, I think Adam is on this call right now and he really dug in deep to looking at serving our local community and partnering with Port Lewis and the Ute Tribal Park to do some trail restoration. Um, so looking for creative ways that we could um, forge new partnerships and, and give back to uh, these local organizations that have met, meant so much to us. Um, we also did a uh, launched a Discover Archaeology webinar series that was a weekly series where we were able to reach 3,000 new people that <laughs> oh my God. before. I mean, like, there's no there's no marketing campaign that can <laughs> that can um, that can even come close to that kind of uh, engagement with new audiences. Uh, so that has been really successful. We've been able to accomplish so many things that um, we've we've been had we've kind of been waiting in the wings, like designing a new website or um, completing our, uh, our basket maker uh, interpretive project uh, that has been, you know, nine years in the making and finally getting that to, um, to publication with its companion database. And, and so meeting a lot of the deliverables that we were able to uh, cross, off, cross off the list. Um, so it's, 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 and allowed us to give us some time actually to complete a lot of these projects and launch new initiatives that when we have 
programming going on, it just bottlenecks everything. We're not able to really focus on getting those deliverables completed. So there's been a lot of silver lining for us. Wow, thank you so much, Sarah. That's awesome. Um, what other, who else, if you could just raise your hand, um, you don't have to share verbally, but have you found that this time of perhaps less programming for some organizations, I know heightened program, programming for others, have you found this time to be one where you can do more planning, where you can take a step back um, and think about what are our real priorities here? How do we best um, tap into our original mission and purpose as an organization, as a culture within our staff? Have you been able to take some, some time to reflect during this year? Let's just see a raise of hands, some reflection. And then another raise of hands for folks. Um, if you have just been so swamped with programming and the doing, all of the doing, perhaps being a direct service organization, um, that you have not had the time to reflect. You have just been serving the community. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So very different experiences. We want to acknowledge all of those here in this space. Um, and as we move down into our next slide, it's slide 26. And um, let me share the, the Google Slides again. Or perhaps, Tracy, if you don't mind, as people come in, um, I'll do it right now. But if anyone else comes in, could you share the Google Slides with them in the chat? That would be awesome. OK, so slide 26 here, the fire of creative destruction. I'm going to reveal our little GIF here. Um, so I want to recognize that there are real challenges. There's real suffering happening in the world right now. I think a lot of us feel that in our hearts. We feel it, the weight of the world on our shoulders. We're involved in this work because we care deeply about people, about communities. And there has been a really a lot of suffering. So I wanna acknowledge that and that everyone's in a different place. And also to acknowledge that sometimes we create our own obstacles for ourselves, right? Um, we have different fears, different assumptions, self-limiting beliefs. I know I have a lot of those. I create the most obstacles for myself of anyone, you know, I'm creating those for myself. So what fears, assumptions, self-limiting beliefs and expectations about strategic planning during this uncertain and chaotic time are maybe no longer serving us. Which ones can we let go of? Which of these assumptions can serve as kindling for this fire of creative destruction in order to step into a realm of, of new and yet unknown possibility? What will be that phoenix rising from the ashes, essentially? And which of our assumptions and limiting beliefs can we throw into the fire and just let go of? Like, my board will never do a virtual retreat. That could be one. Um, or we're not, we're just not ready. What are some of these other things that we're ready to let go of? Feel free to type them into the chat. Anything that's no longer serving you. Mm hmm Yeah. What else? What other personal beliefs, beliefs within our organizations, about our staff, about our board, about the future? not the time to try new things. We've always done it this way. We need to follow the status quo. Having folks drive to meetings from all over, yeah, that might be something of the past, right? That might be something from the before times. Anything else from the before times we want to let go of? We're not going to get as much work done if we work from home. Yeah, maybe that's an assumption we're making. Maybe some people are more productive during the middle of the night. I think we heard that during one of the Something to Chew on webinars, different people's circadian rhythms. People won't use technology, fear of new tech. 
Absolutely. Okay. Let's let them go. Why not? If you go to slide 27, uh, you'll see a concept of, a, of eco cycle mapping. The folks with the team up organization may be familiar with this. We use this during their strategic planning process. But it starts up here in the top left corner with incubation gestation. This is something just building, just starting. Um, and then it grows, develops, moves into maturity and stability. And then, and then letting go of maturity and stability, moving down into creative destruction. These are all different phases, phases of life, phases of an organization's growth and development, phases of a relationship phases of a learning journey. We can use this eco-cycle mapping for all types of things. But we can see that there are these two traps. There's a trap of scarcity and poverty between incubation gestation and that growth development. We're like, we don't have enough resources. We don't have enough people. We've just founded this organization. We don't have any full-time staff, whatever it might be. And then we get into a maturity stability phase where we have a lot to maintain. We've got payroll to pay, we've got health insurance to pay, we've got a board of directors who's relying on us. And we may start getting into a bit of a rigidity trap to keep the status quo, to keep things as they are. And we may develop a strategic plan that is simply around maintaining the status quo. How strategic is that really? How resilient does that make us as organizations? If it's all about maintaining the status quo. Adam, I see you nodding your head back and forth. What do you think? What do you think, Adam? Uh, I think it's, it can be really healthy to grow in new directions. And, and even though um, sometimes the mission doesn't have to change, there's, a, there's a, a lot of neat new ways of looking at things and new ways to serve our communities. Um, a lot of uh, people, not with Crow Canyon, but I have a other couple of nonprofits I serve on their boards, and sometimes they can get stuck. And um, it's, really, it's really neat when one or two people charge uh, forward a new path and uh, open up people's minds to new options. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. And what do we experience oftentimes in this creative destruction phase? Is this scary? Moving through the rigidity trap into creative destruction? What do we experience here? Nikki's nodding. Anything to add? Maybe? That's well, I mean, you could say that the unknown is through all of this, definitely. But I think that um, for organizations that have that stability, that creative destruction to say, OK, we're going to step outside of how we've done what we've done. We're going to we're going to grow. We're going to do things like that. You know, it, it it's scary. Absolutely. Absolutely. But what do we have to look forward to on the other end of that phase? Right some new growth, a new program, a new way of doing things. And so rather than the typical uh, nonprofit life cycle, which is very linear, just kind of goes up, plateaus, can either fade away. Sometimes there are feedback loops too, which is helpful. I really like this infinity loop because it allows us to be more comfortable with change and recognize that constantly, continually, we go through these phases in our organizations and in our own lives, and it allows us to become a little bit more comfortable with that chaotic change, perhaps. So I just wanna pose this as a, a thought piece uh, to consider. Um, and in a second here, we are going to be going into our first breakout. We'll do a few breakouts today. Um, and in this first uh, breakout group, you'll be with about two other people and you will um, introduce yourself. We are on slide 28 now. The um, instructions are on slide 28 and I'll also paste these into the chat for you. So you will be looking at some quotes on the following slides and you will be um, on one slide for your group. So your room number for your breakout will be at the top of your Zoom screen. Um, and please rename yourself with that number. So for example, if you look at my name right here on Zoom, I will rename myself with uh, number one if I am in group one. So please rename yourself with your group number um, as soon as I set you into groups. And you will be looking through some different inspiring quotes about change, about chaos, about strategy. 
um, and pick one quote that resonates with you for this year of 2020 and share just a little bit with your group about why it resonates with you. You don't have to type it. Look, in. It looks yeah. like all the pages say group one on them. Oh, you're right. So if we just want to know that whatever we are, so. You're right. I, um, Nikki, actually, could you help me change that? Would you be willing yeah. to help me change it? That would be awesome. I didn't catch that. Thank you. Um, so starting on slide 29, that will be group one and 30 will be group two and so forth. Um, if you want to drag your little sticky note over on top of your image, you can, but it might fall away behind. Um, so feel free just to choose a quote that resonates with you and share with your other two people. So let's create these very quickly. Okay, is anyone not okay with going into breakouts? Thanks, Nikki. Everyone good to go? Okay, put on your spacesuit. Get ready to go. All right, one, two, three. You will have 10 minutes. Enjoy. I just think it's powerful to hear that like struggles are similar and that like we're going through this like together <laughs> even though we're not together and that's just I I feel like I have to, oh sorry that was my dog wow okay okay <laughs> um that yeah it's just powerful to remember that like we're going through this together and that um we can help each other oh dear maybe I need to check on this yeah, go check. And life is real too. <laughs> life is real. So how, how does this relate to our workshop today? How do some of these different quotes, your little experience in your breakout relate to our workshop today? We're, we're working with people together towards a common goal. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Susan? I want to I want to go back to the question before because uh, Gay from the Animus Museum talked about studying history. And then I've been working at Crow Canyon and working with archaeologists. And when you look, and she just said, you know, we went from the Spanish flu to the Roaring Twenties. So maybe we'll have the Roaring 2021. Like it's always a process where life goes up and down with, I just like that we're moving forward to something way more exciting than a pandemic. I, I sure hope so. We may not know what it is, right. but we may be moving towards something very exciting. Yeah. 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 Brigham? I, I just think it's um, really invigorating to hear what other people are doing and realizing that everybody's really working hard, whether it's reinventing themselves or taking the time to pause and, and review old strategic plans and make sure that they're on target and maybe they've been too busy. Um, so it's just fun to see um, the attention to it. I, I was, uh, I anticipated the conversation to be more like, we don't, we don't know how to start it. And in fact, the conversation was everybody's really thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Wow, cool. That's great to hear. That's wonderful. Yes, Kay. Um, I also think that it's obviously super important to have a strategic plan and know the direction you're going. But as we've seen this year, you know, plans can change and it's really necessary to be able to pivot. Um, I'm, I'm thankful that not only that we're not required, so to speak, to do a plan and then have plan A, plan B, plan C, because that would be exhausting. But we've all, we've shown ourselves that we are capable of doing that um, successfully even. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you're keeping it relevant yeah. changing it with the times as needed. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you all so much for sharing. I'm going to send you back into the same breakout groups now that you've met um, some buddies today. And you are going to do a very short activity, uh, which I hope at the end you will see relates back to strategic planning. Uh, we'll have a little bit of fun with it. And we are going to be on slide 41. This is a little shaking up the mind activity, creative uses. And your only instruction, one instruction, is in your small group, 
develop the most innovative uses of these three objects. We have a soda can, we have a baby nasal aspirator, AKA a snot sucker. Some of the moms might be familiar with that and a corkscrew. So you are going to have just eight minutes with your same buddies to come up with the most innovative uses of these three objects and type them into your breakout group slide. So you'll see on slide 42 is group one, slide 43 is group two and so forth. I've given you 30 spots, probably won't fill all of those in eight minutes, but come up with the most innovative uses you can during that time. Am I talking most in terms of quantity or most innovative in terms of quality? Hmm, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you to determine. So you will have eight minutes here with your same groups. Any questions before I let you go? Okay, here you go. And please, if you could. Okay, welcome back, welcome back. How was that activity? Looks like you guys were really uh, trying to beat what I said of that challenge of maybe you can't come up with 30 in eight minutes. Holy cow, you guys got so many ideas down here. Looks like we've got 13, 11, 21 ideas, 27, maybe with some gaps in there. Wow, good job. You guys really got the creative juices going after a bit, it looked like. Awesome, well, round of applause for everyone for what you were able to come up with. We'd love to hear from a couple of folks. What did your group emphasize? Quantity or quality? The most, the number, or the most innovative, the greatest innovation? Uh, we're on slide 48 now. I'd love to hear from a couple of folks. What did your group emphasize? We actually kind of had a lot of laughs in our group. So I don't know if we were going for quantity or quality, but we had some laughs. So that we're was- We were going for fun. Yep. Enjoyed it. <laughs> awesome. I think that's better than either. Great, Katie. I think we had some good laughs too. And I would say, I think ours was focused on creativity. Mm. <laughs> so we are- being creative in terms of like practical uses and metaphorical uses and just thinking outside the box. Love it, love it, great. Well, what did other people focus on? What was your focus in your group? Yeah, focus on my group. <laughs> okay. Creativity for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the uses we came up with are, are a little bit older than other uses. <laughs> Okay. Just because of our age and our demographic in our group. Awesome. I forgot to tell everybody to keep it PG on this one. The oh. snot sucker. I should have said, let's keep things PG. Hopefully it was comfortable for everyone that way. <laughs> uh, what feelings came up for you in your group? Was there any frustration with the lack of directions, any confusion? What kind of feelings came up for you in that activity? I purposefully did not give you a lot of instruction. I left things pretty uncertain and unclear. Did that generate any strong feelings for anyone? Brigan, was that a little wave? I couldn't quite tell. No, okay. It didn't, our group did not seem to be daunted by the lack of direction. We made up our own. These are leaders here in the room, right? You guys will take the lead. Yeah. I'd say our group definitely noticed that there was lack of direction because we we were looking for direction. Well, are we supposed to use these together, all three of them together? Or are they supposed to be used separately? And so we were um, definitely looking for more clarity. Okay, you're looking for more clarity. And some groups just boldly went ahead uh, without much direction. What about other groups? What did you do with uh, without a lot of clear direction in this activity? Anything that you remember happening? After, uh, I was a little stumped. I think our group was a little bit um, stymied at first going, oh gosh, head scratching. And then we really got on a roll. Nice, okay. So it took a little while to warm up the, the mind, get the left brain and the right brain talking to each other. 
Yeah, and then you Jessica rolling. recommended that we um, just kind of start uh, working together rather than independently, and that worked a lot better. Okay, interesting. So we're starting to go into strategy here. Independent work, working together. Um, I am next going to send you uh, very shortly into a brand new breakout um, with new people in different groups, and you'll be exploring the questions on slide 49. There are a lot of questions here. Um, oh, there are six questions, but two of them are numbered number two. Just found that out. But there are six questions here. You're just going to have five minutes. Um, thank you, whoever's helping me out. Um, you're going to have five minutes with these new people. You're not going to be able to answer all of these questions, but just pick a few to answer here on slide 49. Um, did people have shared or different understandings of your group's goal? What strategies did your group take to achieve your goal? How did your group strategies change over time? What roles did people take within your group? How did your group allocate their finite resources of time, space, and people power? And did, the, did people take complementary or divergent strategies to achieve the goal? So I'd love for you to consider that. And I'm going to create these new breakouts for us. Let me make sure that um, Tracy is able to be with the other part of Tracy for admin. So you're going to be um, perfect for Adam, too short for other people. <laughs> I know I didn't give you a lot of time, but I hope you're able to dig in a little bit with your new friends and share some things from your previous breakout groups um, around these questions of how your strategies changed, um, different roles people took, etc. Um, well, not, we won't be um, debriefing that, but we'll be moving right along to slide uh, 50 to build on that conversation that you just had in your breakouts. And we'd love to hear from folks. Um, were all voices heard equally and equitably during the, um, not this past breakout, but during your creative uses uh, brainstorming with all the different strategies going on with people taking leadership roles or playing more of a support role. Do you feel like everyone was able to share equitably in your groups? Yeah, generally, okay. And when it came down to it, what really mattered within the group to achieve the task? We're on slide 50 here. So when you think back to your original breakout group doing the, the exercise, when it came down to it, what, what really mattered? I remember Nikki talking about laughter. What really mattered for that group dynamic in order to achieve your goal? Anyone welcome to share, Susan? We really hit it off. I think it was just, um, with, I was with um, Gay and Kay and immediately we introduced ourselves and we were comfortable. And I, I don't think anybody took over. And when, when Gay would think of something and then we'd add on to it, it was so quick the way we worked together. Wow. Okay. Don't you, ladies, don't you agree? So there are some good synergy, some gr good group dynamic. You instantly kind of trusted each other. We're able to work collaboratively together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did other people find about what really mattered within within your group. Sometimes I think people raise a hand and then I realize they're just stretching. Mm. <laughs> and how much time was spent on strategically planning that exercise versus strategically doing? Was any time really spent on planning or did you just kind of throw yourself right into it? Nikki shaking her head, no, no, what do you mean? No, I mean, other than, and I, and I mentioned this in my second breakout group, I thought it was funny that we both, Tracy and I, who I kind of equate to number two in our organizations, were like, can we get some more direction, some more definition of what you're looking for here <laughs> and stuff. So I just kind of found that funny that we both, both felt that way, but like we didn't assign roles. We just kind of all just, went for it and that's kind of seems like how 2020 has kind of been it's not the oh you go do this you go do this this needs to be accomplished and we're all just 
we're going for it together collectively and yeah. stuff. So yeah, absolutely. Thanks for sharing. So if you were to do this exercise again with the same group, how might you approach it differently? Would you do some pre-planning? Would you just dive right into it? Would you do it the exact same way? Adam's nodding, maybe exact same way. Anybody else, is there something different that you would do based on what you've learned about the different roles people take or what really matters in that group dynamic? I ask a question. Yes. It would depend on the personalities. You know what I mean? With my, with our group, I don't, I like the spontaneity and the creativity that just came. But if you had like one extrovert and two introverts, then you'd have to think and make a plan, a better plan to make sure everyone had a time to participate. But I feel like we all just jumped in. Great. Great. So what, what might this exercise show us about strategic planning during uncertain or chaotic times? Thinking about different strategies, different people, different personalities, the need to jump into action sometimes, the need to reflect and plan. What might this show us about strategic planning? I'd love for everyone to complete a little sticky note on slide 51. What could this exercise mean for you or your organization? strategic planning during uncertain and chaotic times. Slide 51, and if you're not in the slides, feel free um, to type that in the chat as well. I'll post that. What could this mean for you or your organization? Hmm, these are lovely. Find a way for every person to participate, moving outside your comfort zone. Everyone has to work together, planning versus action, ensure all voices are heard, jumping into the chaos and out of it will come innovation, listening to all voices and their timing. There can be no wrong ideas and brainstorming. Remember to give think time. Everyone has ability to contribute in meaningful ways. Everyone, mm -hmm. include multiple people, perspectives, be brave. Pre-retreat preparation so everyone can participate. Just do it. Sometimes just doing is okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, these are all wonderful insights. Thank you so much for sharing. We are going to be wrapping up here. Um, and Brigan is uh, going to be picking a, uh, a winner for our door prize, a uh, couple winners, um, and we will be wrapping up. Um, so you don't have to do it quite yet, Brigan, but um, just wanted to give you the heads up <clears throat> and draw everyone's attention <clears throat> briefly down to slide 53. I wanna leave you with this quote for our workshop here today. Can I have a volunteer read this for us? I need to take a sip of water. Any takers? Okay, Adam, thank you. The future enters into us in order to transform itself in us long before it happens. Rainer Maria Rilke. This is a curious one for me. I want um, to leave you with this to consider to think about what does this mean about the future entering into us, transforming itself within us long before the future even happens. It's kind of like, it's different from destiny, right? It's like we have a role to play. We are an active participant, an active player in the future that we create for ourselves, for our organizations, for our communities. We have that power of transformation of the future. And I believe that this is why all of us are in this work with community, because ultimately deep down, we believe in this. We believe in our ability as change makers to make real change in the world. And I wanna commend you all for your belief in hope, in dreaming, in vision, 
And that's really where strategic planning starts. It has to start with a vision of the future. Otherwise, there's nothing to shoot for. We need that vision of hope in order to move forward. And I was thinking about, uh, there are a lot of COVID babies, right? There are a lot of babies being born during this time or um, being created during this time. And that takes a lot of hope. We don't know what this child may look like on the other end. We don't know what their, their gender identity may be, anything about this child, but it is within and then it comes out into the visible world with joy, celebration, but there's also suffering and pain that happens in that birthing process. There's suffering, there's pain, but there's joy, there's celebration, and there's the unknown. It's scary, but it's also exciting. And I want you to think about for yourself, for your organization, what is your COVID baby? What are you birthing right now? What will you be giving birth to in the new year? that you don't know what it's gonna look like, that you don't know what all of its possibilities may be, but you believe deeply that it will make a difference and it will matter. So I want you to think about that. What will you be giving birth to in your um, organization or life? Um, and we are really, really wrapping up <laughs> here. If uh, folks uh, don't mind staying on for a couple extra minutes, would love for you to fill in slides 54 and 55. Just what will your first step be? What will that very first step be for yourself, your organization? And how are you leaving this session today? And then we'll let uh, Brigham do her prize drawing now. Great. So before I do the drawing, or Tracy's actually gonna do the drawing, um, I just wanna remind you that we are doing one more um, this year, something to chew on. And it is on December 15th. And you do the same thing, you just, um, registered it to, and it's free. And it's, um, we're highlighting board development and Amber Cote from the um, Colorado Nonprofit Association is gonna join us and walk us through some best practices, which I think will be great. And it's a good time to do it. Um, Tracy, I can't see you. I should move my, are you, are you with us? Oh, look at that hat, that's so cute. It always so, we are gonna draw two names and they each get a one hour session with Sandia. So, Tracy. Anne Marie, are you still here? Yes, she is. Hey. Whoop, whoop. Hey, Anne Marie. And... You put my name in there several times, right? <laughs> Jessica. Nice yes, work, Jessica. Jessica. I get to work with you again. <laughs> That's awesome. Yay! Great. Well, really wanted to say thank you for your time today. Thank you for coming. I hope you really were inspired um, by what um, Sandia um, challenged us to think about and look at and consider as we do some strategic planning, whether it's a big three-year plan or if it's just strategic to get through the end of the month. Um, both kinds are valuable. And so um, with that, have a fabulous week and um, enjoy the holidays. And if we could ask people uh, to complete a quick feedback survey, um, we would love to get your feedback. I've just pasted it into the chat and it's also linked on slide 57. Um, if you wanna stay on for a couple minutes and complete that, uh, or you can do it this afternoon. Um, thank you all so much. It's great to see everyone. Happy December. Thank you.